Hi, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Makers and Shakers, where I interact with kings and queens of Instagram, YouTube, a parallel world which is almost disconnected by many, but many are getting introduced to it. And I would be counting myself as among those people. What is the story behind these success stories? Niharika is joining me. Niharika, say hello to the viewers. Hi, I'm uh, Niharika. Nice to meet you. Lovely meeting you. Niharika is a digital content creator. She's an entrepreneur. She's all of 24 and uh, has had a phenomenal rise on Instagram uh, where her followers have been increasing in millions. Niharika, your video, let's start with your first video, which yes. you did at the age of 18. What did you tell your people about it? I told them it was a hobby, which at the time it was because I was an engineering student and I was like, listen, I don't have a social life anyway because I have strict parents who wouldn't let me go out and hang out with my friends. So I picked up a camera and I was like, I'll make virtual friends. And uh, that just snowballed into something um, so big that my parents don't have a choice that I'm not an engineer right now. <laughs> yes, types of students before an exam to types of people at college, her types of student before an exam went viral why would you choose a topic such as that because that was my life at the time like i said i was a student and i just everything that was happening to me i'm like dude this is so funny because everything that would happen i would just try to like exaggerate it a little bit and in my head i would play it out like it was a movie scene and i'm like this could be a great video you know like when your invigilator is talking too much in your exam hall and you're like excuse me ma'am can i please finish writing but like make that into a video exaggerate it put some background score make it into a mini movie how exciting <laughs> So there's lots of uh, three idiot moments. Oh yes, for sure. I feel that's why I think I like that movie so much because I'm like, yes, I can relate to everything that's happening in this movie, except finding and, someone that's not good looking as Amir Khan. And so, what was the reaction after your first video? Um, honestly, my first video at that time it did really well. I think it it, it got like. 10,000 views in a month and I'm telling you Maria oh, I really thought I did something great I was like oh my god I'm famous like 10 people and you arrived <laughs> I'm so famous yeah I was like oh my god like I'm a star like don't talk to I'm kidding I'm kidding um but it was very exciting and then I just uh, disappeared off the face of the earth because back to engineering and then two months later I upload another video and that goes viral again and I'm like maybe there's something here that I should explore so um we deep dived into that situation you you have a very humorous tinge to all your content. I was looking at them. Uh, does it come naturally to you or you realize that humor, satire are a certain elements that do well on social media because people are genuinely tired of the mainstream media, which we are part of, where there is almost a great degree of seriousness with which everything has to be delivered. And uh, yeah. Instagram has to make it, uh, you know, non-serious. I just think... I, I don't think I plan anything because I started when I was 18. I don't think I had that bandwidth also to plan that this would do well because at the time things weren't like so big on the internet. Digital content creation wasn't a thing. It just started off in the West. It was picking up steam. But in India, it was still like, yeah, videos banati hai, bas kya bakwa, see sab, you know. Um, and now it's like picking up steam. Uh, but at the time, obviously, I didn't plan it. I was just like, hey, this is who I am. I'm going to put myself out there on the internet and see if there are other people that would vibe with my vibe. And uh, just find one cute little family on the internet that just appreciates what I love doing. And with appreciation comes a lot of big bats. How are you able to handle that? So here's the thing about me, right? Like I, uh, I, I, I say, I always say this. I grew up on the internet because I started out so young. I basically evolved with the internet. I'm at a point in my life where I really don't care. I really don't care what people have to say um, negatively. Um, I don't take my highs too highly either because I, because when the lows hit, I don't want to feel that that depth of it and just feel very shallow. You know, those. It, it's just. It can get a little um, taxing emotionally and mentally and like physically. It's, it's exhausting to always have people give you opinions. Like imagine you're just living your life and people are giving you constant opinions. But that's a part of the job and I'm okay with it. And I understand that not everybody can like me because I only don't like everyone. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's fine. And, and then your parents packed you off to US because oh, yeah. they said, okay, 
बेटा पढ़ाई कर लो <laughs> they were like um listen youtube and all fun you uh, do this in your room in the us also just finish your education and then do whatever you want and uh, at the time it wasn't like a like 3 4 years ago also it wasn't like a legit profession to convince your parents and i wasn't bringing in money or the numbers or anything for them to be like okay this is a stable career so they were like whatever you want to do you finish your education and do don't don't say anything before that and i was like you know what valid fine i'm also a huge advocate for like being educated and be, like learning new things so I, i was also super down for it i don't want to blame them entirely i was very excited so so uh, what kind of videos did you make uh, in your engineering college and when you were in the us um so during engineering youtube youtube was my first love um so i jumped on youtube and i did what i had to do but when i moved to the us i just couldn't make those kind of videos anymore because i would make 10 minute long sketches and i had help in the house like my mom would record my brother would record and then eventually i got a videographer but when i moved there it was just me myself and i and i just did not have the kind of time to make a 10 minute long video and kind of sustain that career on youtube to a point where i took a back seat and i almost quit social media i was like okay maybe this isn't for me cuz it's just that one year gap you know like things move so quickly on social media if you take a one year gap i don't think people just sit around and wait for you and i was in that mindset and then the pandemic hit and i had all this time on my hands again and i was alone i couldn't be with my family i was just going into this rabbit hole and i was like what is happening with my life and uh that's when i started making smaller 30 second videos and it just took off and i was like okay this is a sign maybe this is just what i'm meant to do <laughs> and niharika you have uh, made an effort in communicating important issues critical issues in a way that is relatable um people have different kind of contents like content creators such as you uh have different everybody has their own usps what do you think is your usp i just think the way my storytelling i think it's slightly unique from my peers uh which is why it caught steam initially and um i usually base my videos on my personal experiences i don't try to tackle uh, i haven't moved into the fictional space yet which i definitely intend on doing just to challenge myself creatively but i just pick up i think my observational skills are uh, quite quite uh, interesting and fun you can compliment yourself it's all right <laughs> <laughs> no yeah, I'll, i'll let you do that but no, i'm kidding <laughs> but i think i'm i'm good at observing people and just making a mundane situation funny but the content again is extremely diverse and uh, this diversity how important is it that you know content creators on youtube have to be edgy they have to be uh, changing with changing times they have to be you know rethinking themselves reimagining themselves there are challenges yeah. of a different nature Yeah, I think with time we all evolve and I guess when you work on the internet when your job is the internet you tend to have to keep up with these things to sort of be relevant but also the way that you learn these new things but also still remain true to yourself and kind of combine the two make you stand out you know you bring your unique perspective to it people are trying to catch up people are trying to stay relevant yes but what you bring to the table not everybody else can like the, your perspective on things can be unique and should be unique honestly so um, hmm. it's quite it's fun actually and and you saying like you have to reinvent yourself isn't that what we all want like when like sometimes yes. don't we just feel like i just wish i could just be a whole new person and i feel yes. like this job you get to do yeah it. the unpredictability that uh, that yeah. uh, makes us makes us who we are right and yeah. niharika uh, the best part of your work is the diversity that you bring in and i'm going to em- emphasize a little more on it how much does it have to do with your place of work and also Uh, your karma bhumi bengaluru bengaluru has a very different culture from most of indian metropolitan cities yes i grew I up think... in patna so i can talk about the oh, very uh, yeah. you know the distinct bihari roots that i relish yeah. and i cherish uh, and yeah. to someone like you who would, who has yeah. traveled so much has so much to share Yes so I um Bangalore is my home it's my inspiration the people here are my muses my friends and family uh, most of my videos are based on them um it's just 
I just think I'm so rooted to this place. And also because I grew up with people uh, from different, different cultures around me, which is why I can speak Tamil, Telugu, Kannada, Hindi, like whatever you throw at me, I can understand, communicate. It's just because I've been surrounded by people like that. And when you're surrounded by so many types of people, when you're when you're just like always thrown into like the face of diversity, you tend to learn new things that you probably wouldn't if you didn't have an exposure like that. And I think that's where my content comes from because I'm just like exposed to so many different types of people, so many different types of cultures and me moving to LA, people there, their culture and how it's different from ours, but also similar in so many ways. It's just very interesting to like pick up on all those little observations and just make videos out of them. And, and what was your reaction to the entire meat ban controversy that was happening in your city? Sorry, I can't. I didn't get that. The meat ban controversy, of course, that took a lot of political form in your city that was happening. Bengaluru, uh, the state government saying meat nahi khana padega, oh. loudspeaker band karo. Ye oh. jo political tha. Oh yeah, wait, wait, I heard that as me too. And I was like, wait, what, when was that? Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, me, yeah. yeah. Um, I think that was more of what my family had to tackle with. And I did hear complaints now and then from my brother saying, I can't play loud music, post this, whatever. But I'm like, listen, if they, if they do all this, they should also ban this construction noise, which I wake up to every single day. And I live, I, I exist to construction noise at this point. My life's background track, you know how movies have these backing like tracks? I think my life's background track is construction noise. So um, it was an interesting phase for my family. But uh, in some way, I'm glad I didn't have to experience those. <laughs> and uh, let me come back to Bangalore a little more. Uh, you may have heard from what uh, Kiran Majumdar Shaw had to say, the, the boss of Biocon. She said that um, Bangalore uh, is known for creating IT leaders, IT uh, uh, trendsetters. And they would be leaving the city if there is this entire debate about hijab. You must have heard about the hijab protest that happened in Karnataka and the meat ban uh, or halal debate that happened. Uh, would you wade into these controversies? I, I don't think I'm in a place where I should be speaking about those because I just came back to the city. So I would sound like one of those hypocritical people that's left the country, comes back and then gives their opinion on something that I probably shouldn't. So, uh, okay. That's my I, I'll, I'll respect that. I'll respect that. Yeah. Okay. So let, let me take you back two years. Uh, yes. 17th October 2020. You had 100,000 followers on Insta. And on 17th December 2020. November, December. In, in two months time. Yeah. yeah. In two months time. Uh, it goes up to 1 million. What exactly did you do? I have no idea. Like, I just, I literally have no idea how that happened. It was a shock to everybody, including the platform, because they haven't seen a growth like that in a really long time. And uh, I, I was mind blown because from going, from, from like wanting to quit social media to getting this much love and attention in two months, I genuinely didn't know how to handle it. I think I still sometimes don't know how to process it or handle it, but I just take it one day at a time. And that's what I've been doing. Um, it's been insane, dude. Like, I just think I put up content that I thought I found funny and content that my friends found funny. And um, I think lockdown had all of us on our phones as well. So a lot of people were like, hey, I can relate to that. And I was like, yeah, oh, this, oh, this was the lockdown period, right? So the pandemic period. actually it proved to be beneficial for you. I hope everything yes. was fine in your house. Yes, everything was At fine in my house. Uh, for the most part, uh, we did deal with a lot of health issues, just like everybody else. But I I was far away from home. And this was initially when the pandemic initially hit, right? And things took a far worse turn much later. Uh, but in the beginning, I just enjoyed my time making content. <laughs> and uh, the, the other part, that is Living Alone 101, which went viral yes. and crossed 11 million views in 13 days yes <laughs> i i just think i'm telling you uh maria i make content on my life like i said i was living alone i i didn't know what to do i just i would just make videos on my life experience because i'm like hey i can't be the only person that's going through this like i truly believe when something good or bad happens to me i'm like 
it's okay i'm not the only person like i have company and that's what i translate and i just like make a video on it because i don't have another outlet like what do i do about it like i can't just whine and crib about it to people because at some point they're also going to be like okay can you stop whining and cribbing like we get it you yes. live alone your time yes. like you know but if you make a video it just like stays on the internet and people yes. will periodically come to it and understand and relate and uh, living alone i mean yes. uh, w- was it something about uh, that you know pandemic and living alone how difficult is it for a woman living alone i um i think it's difficult i think it's very difficult for anyone to be living alone but especially being a woman i just think um i should have had a uh, slightly more uh, like better skills to live by myself but i went in blind like i don't know what i was thinking i just went in not being right i didn't know how to turn on the washing machine i didn't know how to turn on the dishwasher i i just didn't know what so <laughs> what and my mom was like see this is what happens if you're always like mummy do that mummy do this so i think i really learned ha- I, i learned life skills when i started living alone because i think i just like lived off of my mom the whole time for 22 okay. years i just was like mom please and uh, 22 was also a very lucky you lucky year for you so the, for the benefit of our viewers among yeah. the many recognition that the guest of mine has won is that she featured in the next big thing 2022 list by femina india she she is the winner of the best newcomer of the year at entrepreneur india award 2021 winner of blogger creator of the year 2021 and women disruptor awards 2021 by ad guli um madam disruptor uh, tell me <laughs> what's your what's your career graph going to be what are the I plans just, now i'm going to move back into longer format content i just think i'm really enjoying the comedy space uh, i might try uh, my hand at acting as well but we'll see we uh-huh. haven't come across anything that we found interesting yet but uh, we're quite open to it and we're just honestly i'm just enjoying the ride i love making content i love doing comedy i love being goofy i love making people laugh and it's it's everything i've ever done and now that i get to do it for a living it just it doesn't get better than that i'm so Anirik, that. if you if it's about making people laugh doing comedy yeah. then what about being a stand up comedian oh my god here's the thing i'm such an anxious person that the minute you put me on a stage i'm just going to be like up oh, the yeah like just no i think my oh, but is you're doing a fairly good job with this interview i'm you're going across as extremely natural Thank you but I'm not trying to make I'm not trying to make you laugh and I'm not like in a spot like I know like even if I'm not being funny you'll be okay with it but if if it's a huge audience and I have to ah. be funny on command I'm just going to be like oh my god like I just I hate myself like this is not funny they hate me I'm just going to have I'm yeah. a, I'm going to overthink so I'm just going to have all of those thoughts and just yeah no it's not for me <laughs> Yeah no but uh, yeah you maybe you're right because when you are in a room such as that people expect you to be funny and here i'm just expecting you to be you so tell me about the collaborations that you've had with netflix and amazon prime oh they've been incredible i just think the amazing thing about netflix and amazon is that they give me full creative freedom which a lot of brands don't do and it's very interesting to see how they fully trust me um amazon gives me amazing like creative liberty to mess around with their classic uh, movies and netflix is uh, my i have a soft spot for netflix cuz they're an incredible team i love their team i've gotten amazing opportunities from them we've done i've collaborated with like people that i've always loved with netflix and it's just been an incredible incredible journey and i can't wait to do more with them because they're my two favorite platforms and brands to which, work with which which is your favorite netflix series these days are you done with bridgerton oh i actually you're going to oh my god everybody's going to hate me i haven't watched bridgerton yet but i'm oh, like you haven't i have a season no i actually haven't i'm, so I'm not, I'm not judging it. you no i actually haven't watched bridgerton like i want to like i want to say i have just because i know it's like the thing now but i i haven't i don't know how i missed it but now i'm just like oh my god everybody's talking about it i should watch it but i'm watching queen of the south the new season just came out ah, and i've seen it i've seen it i've seen it oh my god it's one of my favorite shows and i'm so hype about it and the new season Teresa just came out mendoza yes uh, isn't she such a bad ass wow. i'm obsessed i love that show yes Yes, yes, yes. Okay. Um just tell us uh tell the viewers about something that they do not know about you. 
that they do not know about me. Um, Okay, in my videos, I come off as a very aggressive person because I'm always yelling and screaming and like very like you know intimidating. But uh, in person, I'm I'm actually a very like calm, chill person. So when people expect me to be very aggressive, I'm like, it's fun video, bro, real life and all. But like you know, a little bit chill. Um, and also, a lot of people think I'm really tall. Um, huh? You should see me. You should really just see. And most people are like, "Oh my God, you're so tiny!" And I'm like, "What? Like, what did you? How? Like, how tall did you think I was?" So I think that's one thing they don't know about me. And uh, so, what's your revenue model like? And uh, how many people work with you? Um, I have an incredible team. That both my okay. So I have two main people. There is an incredible team behind them, but like my manager Viraj and my PR agent Parul, like they're both my managers actually. They're both my best friends too, and uh, they hold it down for me. They do they get everything done for me, and I honestly I don't think I would be able to do anything or even function or exist without them. Incredible, like wh- whatever I am, it's because of them. Um, my revenue model, um, Instagram doesn't really pay for videos like YouTube does. There is no AdSense revenue. So it's just the off, like off chance when I do the brand deals is how I make my money. And, uh, when I do shoots for other, like, like for a Netflix or like an Amazon, those, those kind of, that's the revenue model. But once you kind of reach a decent sustainable, um, following your income is just enough like a stable job yes enough to have two managers and teams behind them <laughs> no listen here's the thing they've they've been behind me since i was 18 even before i made them a penny it's just how much they truly believed in me even when i had that one year lull where i quit content creation like viraj my manager he pushed me so hard he was like listen i i don't care if you don't believe in yourself just give me 10 videos like when reels came out he was like give me 10 videos if this doesn't work out i promise you i won't ask you for another video you can block my number and i was like okay fine because i i knew taking up that challenge i knew i would win as in like nothing would happen nothing would come out of it but yes i am and that just like made me fully just have blind faith in them and just do whatever so what is your day usually like a day in the life of niharika Oh, I graduated last month. So uh, two months ago, actually. So un- up until then, it was uh, very different. But now that I'm in India, I I don't think I've had better days, if, if I'm being honest. I've, I've been back, what, like 10 days. And I think this has been the best time of my life. I wake up, I have to send in like four to five sc- scripts. We're doing interviews, we're doing collaborations, we're doing shoots, we're planning travel. I love being busy. And I'm like, why do I even, like, why did I even move away? This is what I want. This is what this is exactly what I want, and I get to spend time with my family also in between because I feel really bad because I really want to hang out with them and I don't get to, but they're cute. When I'm getting ready, they'll come sit in my room and they'll talk to me. Uh, <laughs> it's very cute. And uh, so, uh, what is the year looking like, 2022? Hopefully, exciting. I can only see as far as the next couple of weeks or uh, the next few months but i genuinely think this i'm hoping i'm manifesting and praying to god that this is my year Busy. I, I hope the same what my year to I, like. I i wish the same for you thank you so much niharika thank you for sharing your story mm-hmm. and thank you for uh, telling us why you are so funny tell uh, let's end with <laughs> something fun let, let me give you uh, put that on you how would you Oh my god. And shakers. <laughs> see, see, guys, I just want to say that she she told me she's not going to put me on the spot and she put me on the spot. <laughs> so uh, I'm just uh, I'm going to I'm going to do exactly what I said I'm going to do and freeze and just going to be like I don't know <laughs> no, what to say. Don't. don't <laughs> I, know. I wish you all the best Niharika for a 24 year old you have um, achieved quite a lot and I wish you all the success. May more followers follow you <laughs> may wealth follow you and may good content follow you take care thank you so much and thank you to the viewers let's catch up another week with another phenomenal guest on makers and shakers